Okay, so in this video, I'm going to work through two trickier binomial expansions. And in both of these cases, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to expand brackets. We're going to have to have the expansion, and then we're going to expand the brackets out as well when we're multiplying them together. So um, this first one, this 1 minus x times the square root of 1 plus 2x, um, I've chosen this one uh, as a particularly good example because um, it has a point where you kind of you get through and then you think you've done enough, but actually then you've got to backtrack and do a little bit more work. Okay, so this is a particularly good example to have a go at. So what we're going to do first um, is just write down this as one minus x times by 1 plus 2x to the half. So if we rewrite that second bracket, 1 plus 2x to the half, um, then we're ready to use the expansion. So we've got the 1 minus x. We're going to leave that bit alone. And then we're going to expand this 1 plus 2x to the half. So we're going to have 1 plus a half times 2x plus a half times minus a half time, uh, over 1 times 2 times 2x squared, plus a load of other terms. Now, I'm not going up to the cubic term because I need to find here the first three terms. And so we would be expecting that that's going to be a constant term, a linear term, and a quadratic term. Anything beyond that, uh, I'm probably not going to be needing to use. So that's why I'm just adding these plus dot dot dots there. So then I want to tidy this up. So we've got the 1 minus x, so then you've got 1 plus x, and then we've got this half times minus a half, so minus a quarter. We're dividing that by 2 and then times it by 4, so that's minus a half x squared, plus a load of other terms. So if we start expanding this, both of those terms in that bracket must multiply with all of the terms in that bracket. But of course I can't... I'm not going to expand the whole thing. I can't because there's an infinite number of terms in that bracket. So you're only multiplying out the ones that you need. So we've got 1 times 1, which will be 1. 1 times x is x. 1 times minus a half x squared. And then we've got 1 times all the rest of the terms, but I don't need to include those. Now underneath, it's a good idea to do this in rows because then it makes it easier to um, combine at the end. So then I'm going to multiply minus x by each of these terms. So minus x times 1. And I'm going to place it underneath the linear term. So constant terms go together, linear terms go together, quadratic terms go together, etc. Then minus x times x is minus x squared. And then minus x times a squared term will give me a cubic. I'm not interested. OK? So then we've got 1. Then we've got x take away x. Well, that's 0. And then we've got minus a half x squared take away x squared is minus 3 halves x squared. But the problem is that 0 cannot be considered as a term. So... Actually, all we've done is find the first two terms. There is no linear term. So that means I've got to go back and go back to the original expansion and then find another term. I need the next one. So I've got a half times minus a half times minus three halves over one times two times three times by two x cubed plus other stuff. So I'm going to need to simplify that. So we've got uh, 3 over 8 divided by 6 is 1 16th, and then times that by 8 is a half. So we've got 1 half x cubed plus a load of other stuff. Right. So now I've got 1 times a half x cubed plus a load of other stuff, and minus x times minus a half x squared is, oh, sorry, plus one half x cubed, plus a load of other stuff. So this next term 
is a half x cubed plus a half x cubed, so a single x cubed. And there's going to be a load of other stuff. So we now have three terms. 1 take away 3 halves x squared plus x cubed. And these are the first three terms of the binomial expansion of 1 minus x times the square root of 1 plus 2x. So this is quite a nice example where we had to go back and find uh, go one step further. Now I can't say that that's going to be the situation that you face in an exam. In fact, I'd probably say that's a tougher problem. But if you can do that type of problem, then anything that is slightly more straightforward, you should be all right with. So let's have a look at uh, question number two. OK, so number two, we've got this cube root of 8 minus 3x over 3 minus x squared. So we could write that as 8 minus 3x to the third. OK, that's the cube root of 8 minus 3x. And this is the same as timesing by 3 minus x um, to the minus 2. OK, because dividing by 3 minus x squared is the same as multiplying by 3 minus x to the minus 2. So here we've actually got two uh, things that we need to expand. But we can't expand either of them in their current form because neither are in the form of 1 plus x to the n. So, first things first, we've got to factor the 8 out of the first two terms here. So 8, 1 minus 3 eighths x to the third, times by factoring out the 3, 1 minus a third x to the minus 2. OK. So we're going to get 8 to the power of a third, so 2. 1 minus 3 eighths x to the third times by 3 to the minus 2 is a ninth 1 minus a third x to the minus 2. So if we bring the 2 and the ninth out to the front, we've got 2 ninths of 1 minus 3 eighths x to the third times by 1 minus a third x to the minus 2. OK, so we now need to expand both of these. Now, first three terms, OK, we need to think how many do we need to find. Well, we should have the first three terms for both of these, OK, um, as our initial starting point. So 2 ninths times by 1 plus n, so 1 third, times minus 3 eighths x plus a third times by, right, save on space, um, 1 third take away 1, so minus 2 thirds over 1 times 2, and we've got minus 3 eighths x squared plus a load of other stuff. Right, let's rewrite that one to make it clearer. Right, second bracket. 1 minus a third x to the minus 2. So 1 plus n, which is minus 2, times minus a third x, plus n, so minus 2, times by minus 3, over 1 times 2, times minus a third x squared, plus a load of other stuff. OK. So now we want to tidy this up. So we have the 2 ninths, then we've got 1 take away 1 eighth x, when we multiply those together. Now here we've got uh, minus 2 ninths, dividing that by 2, uh, timesing that by 3 eighths squared. So that's minus 1 over 64 x squared plus a load of other stuff, times by 1 plus 2 thirds x. Then we've got uh, 6 divided by 2 times by, what's that, 1 third squared. So that's a third. 
So plus one third x squared plus a load of other terms. Right. So at this point, I'd probably keep the two ninths to one side. Okay. Now, we've got one. So we need to multiply each of the terms in this bracket by each of the terms in this bracket. Okay. Now, it doesn't make sense to include anything that goes above an x squared at this point, unless absolutely necessary, OK? Um, because we want the first three terms, because we're looking for a constant term, a linear term, and a quadratic term. So anything beyond that, uh, we'll probably be wanting to ignore. So we've got 1 times 1, which is 1. I'll probably write this in a one line, I think. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 thirds x, so 2 thirds x. 1 times a third x squared. And then you're going to get a load of other stuff. Then we're going to get minus 1 eighth x times 1. So minus 1 eighth x. Then minus 1 eighth x times 2 thirds x. So that will be... Um, what will that be? 2 over 24, so 1 twelfth. So minus a twelfth x squared. And then you're going to get this minus 1 eighth x times the squared term, but that gives us a cubic. So I'm not particularly interested in that. Then we've got the minus 1 64th x squared times the 1. So minus 1 over 64 x squared. And then that's going to multiply with each of these other terms, but it's going to give me cubics and cortex and stuff I don't need. Okay? So, we've got 2 ninths times by 1. We've got the 2 thirds take away 1 eighth. So, 13 twenty fourths x. And then we've got this 1 third take away 1 twelfth, take away 1 over 64, which is 15 over 64 x squared plus a load of other stuff I don't need. So that then I could just multiply through, so I get 2 ninths. We've got the 13 over 24 times by 2 ninths is 13 over 108. And then 15 over 64 times by 2 ninths is 5 over 96 x squared plus a load of other terms. And there are the first three terms um, of my binomial expansion. So there's a lot of kind of work to get there. There's a lot of places where things can go wrong. Um, but that is the process that you need to go through.